Disclaimer. These videos are meant to be a brief overview of the subject. They are written to meet time constraints while still conveying factual historical information. My sources for each video are in a video summary below and can get you started on a more in-depth look at the subject. On a personal note, if there is a way to mispronounce the name, I will do it. It is a gift and I am sorry about it ahead of time. Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of the Falkland Islands, located in Falkland Island, South Atlantic, and involving elements of the United Kingdom and the German Empire on the 8th of December, 1914. German Admiral Graf Maximilian von Spee had successfully defeated the British forces at Cornell, but his pessimism hadn't left him. Wanting to utilize the advantage of no Royal Navy nearby, he immediately headed for the Falkland Islands, a British outpost capable of refueling the German fleet and communicating with Germany itself using a radio. The Royal Navy HQ, however, was not going to sit on its haunches and do nothing. He had already dispatched two modern, fast battlecruisers, the Invincible Dean Flexible from Port Stanley. With the two battlecruisers was the first Sea Lord, Admiral Fisher, determined to make up for the Royal Navy loss at Coronel. Spee approached the Falklands with his two armor cruisers, three light cruisers, and three transport ships, not realizing that two battlecruisers, three armored cruisers, and two light cruisers, along with a grounded pre-dreadnought, were waiting for him. Spee also didn't realize that the new British battlecruisers were outfitted with eight brand new 12-inch guns, which easily outshot and outdamaged Spee's own 8.2-inch guns. Yes, size does matter in naval warfare. Even the new, non-battlecruisers under Admiral Fisher were more modern ships, such as the armor cruisers the Cornwall, the Kent, the Carnarvon, two light cruisers the Bristol and the returning Glasgow, and an old ship called the Canopus. While the Canopus could not sail and was grounded on the beach, it could be used as a ship battery that guards the shore. A grave mistake would shadow this engagement. When Spee began his attack run on December 8th, he noted there were several ships in port that he couldn't identify. He mistakenly assumed they were Japanese and therefore not a target of his. However, he was wrong. They were the six supported ships of the two battlecruisers. If he had attacked the ships while they were in port, he might have destroyed them and changed the course of the battle. Unfortunately, he didn't, and the six ships under the command of British commander Doveton Sturdy commenced an attack against Spee's exhausted fleet. Spee attempted to make a break for it when he saw this, but he watched as all eight Royal Navy ships began to catch up. Knowing he couldn't escape, he decided at 1.20 p.m. to turn and fight. The initial exchange was a surprise as the German Scharnhorst managed to damage the Invincible and then make a run for it. The winning position would not last and Spee watched as the remaining Royal Navy along with the Invincible's recovery as they eventually got back within firing range of Spee sometime around 2.40 p.m. The naval battle was over quickly with Spee and his flagship, the Scharnhorst, being the first ship sunk. The Dresden was the only German ship to escape. The German losses were 1,870 killed, 215 captured, two armored cruisers sunk, two light cruisers sunk, and two transports that were scuttled. British losses were negligible with only 10 killed and 19 wounded. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War.